Right, how we doing, fellas? It is your boy, Marcus. Good luck for you. Some weekend challenges. Golden Eye, double O agent. You already know where we be is at, man. I can't believe we already made it this far, man. Time flies. All right, Cradle. First thing you want to do, back up, get that body armor. Start blasting. Why? Because there's a guy coming at you here just shooting. Kind of like you're shooting, except he actually hits you. Rather, you don't even know if you're hitting him. And trust me, there will be often times where he gets you and you don't even kill him because he will kill you. Music is also pretty tough in this game, really exhilarating for a map that, you know, isn't that great or anything and that fun. But it's a final boss, you know, so it's not going to be that crazy. Um, the music really gets you going right there. Trevlin, activate the antenna, whatever. So basically two objectives. You got to take down the antenna and you also got to kill Trevlin. Want to get as much ammo as you can right here because you're going to need it. Also try to line these guys up in ways that they can't get you. Unfortunately, I just blew this whole part right there. I should have waited a little bit up top. I'm trying to though. You got to do this quickly because or else you're just going to have like a, just a ton of dudes coming at you. So you kind of have to be quick while picking up stuff while doing shit. It's crazy. Shoot that uh, shoot that turret out over there because or else that thing's going to demolish you. And then this guy, sometimes he's there, sometimes he's not. I don't know. Whatever. Get the other turret over there while I ain't looking at you. Cool deuces. You saw Trevlin went down there. We're going to have to play around with him later. You got to destroy this computer, basically. Boom. That one's gone. There's your objective A. Now it's all about Trevlin. Now, there's a couple ways of doing this. Uh, I did it the, this way. Hey, we'll, we'll talk about how I did it. Um, some people will let him go downstairs and just wait for him up top. I didn't think that really worked out for me well. I prefer rushing right over next to him. Don't even hit him in this downside. You know, occasionally shoot him, you know, like I did right there. But aside from that, you're not really going to get too many other hits over there. And then he'll eventually stop like he does right here. Put a couple bullets in him, and you know, once you, if you keep seeing dialogue, you're doing good. Now, here's the clever part. He's so quick going up there. I mean, that's some crazy athleticism, Trev. I'll give you some credit for that. What you want to do is come from the other side and line up right here at the edge of the corner so you can't turn around. Boom. Get another dialogue. If you're getting dialogue, you're doing well. Unfortunately, this guy's going to line me up right here. I'm shooting, and he's coming John Rambo at me. If you notice right there, if I didn't have the body, I'd be dead. He took out one whole life away from me. That's crazy talk. All right. So now that I notice he took out the whole life for me. What I'm doing is I'm trying to find the body armor. There's also body armor in one of these rooms. It's not in the main frame, which is the one I walked in. It's in the other room. Unfortunately, I took the wrong step. This dude jumps out over here. Don't like that. I'm trying to get Trav moving. Whatever. I didn't even get any bullets on him. Don't worry about it. Get the body armor. It's hidden over there. Whatever. Just duck in. Get it. Now, be careful there. He's traveling. He's a he's monster with the shot. Boom. Managed to get him right there, though. Boom. Gonna now chase after him. If you don't, if you just kind of stand there and you don't really hit him, He's going to smack you with this AR and just destroy you. Um, so you're going to chase him down over here again. You're going to do the whole loop again. Um, once again, you can try it out. There's different strategies. You go online and watch them. There's probably a ton of different ways that people beat this guy. This is how I did it. And, you know, there's a ton of walkthroughs also that describe that. I was looking afterwards to see how people did it. And there was a ton of different ways. And I was like, wow, that's crazy. I would have never even thought about that. No one I thought that would have worked. And these guys just annihilate me right here. See, what happened with these guys was when we were upstairs before, they were coming as well. And then they're saying over there. So Trevor's shooting down there. Don't look, even bother to look at where he is. You already saw kind of like a glimpse of where he is. That's all you need to see. Got to look. I was looking to see if that enemy was him, but no. He's staying over here like with this crazy pose ready to shoot. But we never give up. Finish the job if you can. That's the guess what you need to know. That's when you know game time's coming. You also notice the music changed. So now you know shit just got real. And we're going to have to kill this guy. And we're going to end the game. Duck around that guy. Pro move. Golden eye. Double O agent. You saw that duck. Don't even bother with him. Just literally ran through him. Not even sweating the technique. Jumping down over here. Trev now, you saw he pushed up over here. He already went down to the middle part, which is the part we're going to have to do. Got to be careful here, though. You got to make sure you land this right. If you fall off here next to Trevlin, you will not be a happy camper. So he jumps down. Boom. I was always better, James. He's talking that mad smack. I'm jumping down. You also got to be careful. If he shoots you like he did right there, you have a good chance of dying. You popped him. Also, another thing to be worried about here. So you got him. Not for England, for me. Cute, very nice line. Um, sometimes, there'll be people shooting from upstairs as well. Um, so you got to be careful with that. And then we hop over here onto the helicopter. We are gone. We are deuces. Golden eye. Double O agent. We beat it, right? Kind of. Eh. So you be golden eye, right? And this is a very interesting way of doing it. That not a lot of games do right here. So we get over here through this um, nice little sequence right here. They tell you, okay, next, blah, blah, blah. And I was kind of a little bit confused because I do remember that they give you credits, right? I was like, well, where are the credits at? I mean, I know that there's credits at some point over here. What they did in this game, which is very interesting, they give you the credits, 
Um, I will, well, they give you, first off, they give you like this, you know, they did the regular just screen, you know, just check out your stats and whatnot. Um, and then they give you like a little scene, with a scene with Natalia, which is kind of be creepy to talk over. I don't even know what I'm going to say over there. I didn't even plan that one. I, I, I gotta think of something pretty quickly here. Uh, and then they give you the credits, and they give you two more stages. Um, so that's kind of strange. I mean, I guess it's a bonus stage, you know, they don't really have to do with the storyline. Um, so I guess you can kind of do that, but I don't really know why they just didn't give you stages. Why don't they go straight to this? This would make more sense. You know, you go to the helicopter, you do this, and then check the stats later, but. There we go. Oh, James. Oh, James. That pimp game. Uh, doesn't really look like where the movie ended. <laughs> I'll tell you that. The movie ended on not a lot in another space, but that's cool. Uh, they give you the cast, which is really cool, too. Um, you know, they, um, it's very, you know, it's, it, it, you know it's a movie tied, you know, Golden Eye, 007, blah, blah, blah. Um, but it's cool that they give you the cast, because it really makes you feel like it's a movie tied. kind of makes you feel like you, you did a movie, you know. And it just tells you, like, what their jobs were, what their name was, rather than, like, you know, what the actors was. Obviously, there was no voice, there was no acting and whatnot. Um, but it gives you that movie feel, so that's kind of cool. It's those little things, man. It's a little thing. We talk about a lot of times. It's little things that do the difference. Um, there's bigger things, you know, the control, the gameplay, uh, the graphics, the, the sound. That's all big. But the little things like that, that little touch right there. And it's also just creepy, creepy that they just show you making out with this girl for, like, days, son. I mean, it's, I guess it's a pimp. It's cool. You're pimping it. But, like, you, you kind of get the you kind of get the, uh, the idea right here. Where's the screen fame? My man, Dr. David Doke. You know, Dope, Dr. Dope, the guy who gives you the thing. That's pretty good. Good stuff right there. Um, so overall, I mean, it's, it's a great game. Uh, it's a great game. Uh, it's, it, it, it redefined, you know, first-person shooter for, like, consoles. Uh, the multiplayer was crazy. Uh, the multiplayer was so much fun. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can still to this day go out there. And there's still people who play it. You can go online. There's people, like, hacking and modding and stuff. There's just so much stuff that, like, people do with GoldenEye. Um, and it, it's tons and tons of fun. Uh, they, they did, you know, they found a very good balance between, and that's, I think, where GoldenEye really succeeded at, a good balance between the movie and the stages. So, they, it follows the movie relatively, you know, you start off in a dam, you, you know, you go off the runway, you know, the facility, and then you get other stuff, like, you know, what happens to Sephiroth, which didn't happen in the movie. Um, I don't really remember the train depot in the movie, to tell you the truth, I don't, I don't even think there was a train, that much of a train depot type thing. Um, so there's a lot of other stuff, you know, uh, the cradle does, the caverns, I think, but the caverns wasn't that big of a deal as it is here with, like, a monster stage, so they really adapted it, um, pretty well, uh, they kept you along the movie storyline, now they don't really, like, play it that long, like, if you watch the movie, you're not gonna, like, this isn't, you, I guess they'll reveal that, you know, Janice is, like, the big spoiler, you know, that Janice is traveling, that's about, like, the only big spoiler you're getting out of this thing, though, um, so it, it it follows it as close as it could, and I think that's kind of what you have to do with movie game. Movie games really suffer because they they feel like they are so trapped into we have to follow the movie, you know, step by step by step by step, and it doesn't work. You know, it's two different things. It's movies and the video games. It's two different worlds. You can't like all of a sudden it, it just it's it doesn't it don't work that way. Take my word for it. Don't work that way. So. I think this game, you know, they played it very well. It had a good balance between we're going to follow the movie, we're going to follow the storyline of the movie, but we're also going to do some things that we have to adapt. Um, <clears throat> and then it also keeps some key scenes. Like, for example, you know, the bathroom scene, the facility where you jump down the guy. It's not the same, but, it, you know, it's close enough. Um, you meet Trevlin, for example, in that, in that, uh, in that uh, the facility a lot early doing this game. Who cares, though? You know, as long as you meet him in there, it doesn't really matter. And you get that liberty with the game. It's a damn video game. I think the video games take themselves a little bit too serious a lot of times. And we take video games a little bit too serious sometimes. Um, let's talk about, for example, uh, Metal Gear. Like Metal Gear 5. Uh, you know, David uh, Hare. Hare? Hopefully that's his name. I don't even know. The guy who does Snake's voice isn't doing it. They changed it with Keeper Sublime. Alright, am I happy about it? No, not really. I don't think it's really that big of a deal. Uh, I mean, I don't think it's really, you know, that, that good of a move. Uh, they said it was because he needed somebody younger. Okay, yeah, that's not that best thing. Is a game all of a sudden going to be horrible? You're not going to play the game? Is it that bad where people are like, come on, man. It's all right. Very nice touch right here. James Bond will return. Gotta love it. I mean, at this point, you know, there's already, like, a movie, like, in the works. Or maybe, I don't even know if The World's Not Enough came out at this point. Or I think The World's Not Enough is maybe Die Another Day was the next one. I don't really know. I don't know my Bond chronology that well with Pierce Brosnan, to tell you the truth. And then they dropped the music, the actors, boom. My man James Bond with, like, a DDF, I think it was. Natalia right there, <clears throat> Alec Trevlin, 006, Xenia on top, Janice Operative, my man Arkady Amarov, General, I'm gonna butcher these names, Borif Gashenko, Valentin Sukovsky, XKGB agent, 
Dmitry Mishkin, the defense minister with a monster shotgun, by the way. The Russian soldier. These guys don't even get names. Russian infantry. This is really cool. Really cool to give you the casting call. Uh, you kind of, it really, you know, you get those memories of, like, what happened. A lot of games do this. Uh, you know, Mega Man, I think in Mega Man they showed as well. They show you the stage and the stuff that happened. Um, and even, like, in further Mega games, they'll show you, like, the previous robot masters. Little nostalgic facts like that really help out right there. Helicopter pilot, look at that. He didn't even got a weapon. He just got his fist. He don't need it. The St. Petersburg guard that we saw over there in the statue. The civilians. Yeah, I wish you had guns. You would have been a lot better off if you had guns instead of just getting in front of my damn tank. Tons of civilians right here. Probably like, look at that. Oh, this guy. He's in the bar fight. He's a bar. That's the Kevin Garnett stuff. It was, it was crazy out there, man. It was a bar fight. All oh, the commando right there. Siberian guard. Music's so good. Siberian Special Forces Jungle Commando right there. I like to see this guy Contra. Janus Special Forces, another beast with the messed up eye. The Moonraker Elite. Now these guys we haven't seen yet. We're gonna meet these guys. Moonraker Elite, huh? Mayday. These are all your multiplayer characters right here. Jaws. Ho oh, ho. Jaws. What a guy. Wait till next week when we get to have some fun with Jaws. Oh lordy lordy lordy. Cause it ain't over yet. We got another one.